Magnus Oyinbe, a former commissioner in the Delta State Government, columnist and democracy advocate, has released a book titled Leading from the Streets, Media Interventions by a Public Intellectual, 1999-2019. to 2019. The book is a compilation of compelling articles written and published in the mass media by the author Magnus Onyibe between 1999 and 2019, spanning the entire range of Nigeria's socio-economic and political life. The foreword to the book is written by General Yakubu Gowon, former head of state of Nigeria from 1966 to 1975. He says the book is in order to help guide policymakers in their work of policy formulation for the good of Nigeria, Africa, and the world at large. Joining us now for a book chat on Leading from the Streets, Media Interventions by a Public Intellectual, 1999 to 2019, is the author, Magnus Onyibe. Good morning and welcome to the morning show. Congratulations on your book. Thank you for having me. Well, congratulations. Thank you. This is the fourth or fifth book? The fourth. Oh, okay. Mm. You are not doing badly at all. The fifth is in the making, actually. I like the other ones. <laughs> yes. This is very well produced. Yeah. Congratulations. Thank you. Thank you very much, Doc. Well, first, let's start with your introduction. Mm. I see you are very optimistic about the impact, the influence of public intellectuals and public opinion. I think there's a book on the subject, Public Opinion and Democracy, mm. and how public opinion influences uh, policy. But mm -hmm. part of the challenge we have had in this country is that sometimes, you know, those of us in this business, uh, you know, the commentariat, we, we tend to feel that government doesn't listen. And that, you know, all these pieces we write, you know, every, every week, you know, there was a time I was writing two, three, mm -hmm. every week. Uh, and you have done over 1,000 pieces over a period of 20 years, 77 articles in this uh, uh, book. But I see your optimism at the beginning. You were given examples of certain opinions you expressed mm -hmm. uh, that seem to have made impact and influenced uh, certain persons, government, mm -hmm. political parties. Mm -hmm. Are you really that optimistic that people really re li uh, listen and take what we write seriously? They do. In fact, it just happened only yesterday. Uh, the president approved uh, the demand over a very long time for state police. If you recall, my column last week was on state police. I was emphatic about it. I was not, I did not equivocate. I said state police have to be formed. Call it any name, community police, state police, decentralization of the police force, which was the focus of the president. And uh, I was pleasantly surprised that yesterday happened. And if you recall, it was after that piece the governors of uh, PDP came together and went to make a presentation and insisted on state police and whatever. So it just added to the, uh, the um, advocacy that we've been making, you and I and the rest of the people who uh, um, push the pen from that perspective, that there should be state police because it's their job. That's what they are trained to do. That's what the constitution assigns them. But the military, since 1966, when they came in, they decided to emasculate the police because police was the biggest threat to them. They're the largest arms carrying organization after the military. And so they, 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 they disparaged them, if you don't mind, whatever, you know, they made sure they didn't have the means to be able to counter them in case those they removed from power politics were going to rally around them and ask them to push. So that has uh, affected us. That has uh, led to our inability to really be able to police the system. Because if state police comes back, as they are planning now, look, the forest, for instance, if you remember back in, the, in those days, we used to have forest guards. The forest is now occupied by the marauders, by the bandits. That's where they take the victims to. We have experience, whatever, you know, of what has happened over the years. But now if there's forest guard, they will occupy the place. There won't be Sambisa. Sambisa will be inhabited by forest guards, and it will not be a no-go area. You know, so those are things that we should have done a long time ago. You know, but they keep creating the fear, oh, the state governors will take it over, they use it to do this. Based on experience, there's nothing that we have expressed fear against that has happened the way we feared it would happen when it happened. Let's take for instance. Back in those days, we're saying, oh, you can't have ATMs. You know, Nigerians will just go and cut, carry the thing and take all the money in it and whatever, you know. But we have had ATMs for a very long time and nothing of that sort has happened. So we always fear the unknown. We don't want to take risks. 
That's why you also see Africans, they don't dare to go to the moon or go to anything that they don't know. They create all sorts of magic about it and whatever, you know. But in reality, these things don't happen if we are bold enough to take on these responsibilities or go on those routes. All right. Uh, the book is in seven parts and very interesting topics, especially as you, as Dr. Bat already highlighted, seven, seven articles out of over 1,000 in 20 years. But let me start with part one. Mm -hmm. found that quite intriguing. Say so reading the preface and going into parts. And reading these articles we wrote in 2007, 2015, seems as if I was reading an article written for today, Absolutely. especially as it has to do with democracy, government, and governance. Mm -hmm. In fact, one of these caught my eye, which is, are elections giving democracy a bad name in Nigeria? And you wrote this in 2015. Mm -hmm. But if you had written this this no. year, uh, last year, you'd have been apt. Mm -hmm. I like you, you know, based on this. I mean, the afterword was also given by Dr. Lisa Bakoba, mm -hmm. SAN. Your thoughts, how do we move away from, I mean, I know this book doesn't look to provide any solution, but to get people to think and to go down history lane in some parts, in some areas. But your thoughts on elections giving Nigeria, a, oh, sorry, Nigeria giving democracy, or elections in Nigeria giving democracy a bad name. Yes. How do we move away from that? So that perhaps when you write the next article, it's a different story from what we had in 2015 mm. and what we had in subsequent years following that. Mm. I think we, we all know what uh, it would take to do that. Uwe's committee report was very clear. It was succinct on what we should do. But we only adopted one or two or three things out of it. The rest we dumped. So we know what to do. We talked about recently about uh, um, uh, election practice commission. We know it's desirable. But they don't it the last minute, except this review that they're planning to do now, they will take all this in. We have to be altruistic. We all know the solutions to these things. We're just beating about the bush, you know, not wanting to do them. I mean, we, we know that these things work in other climes, and we know what they're doing. We can learn from them. Even, you know, as we speak right now, the issue of insurgency and banditry and whatever, we know what happened in Brazil not long ago. We know what's going on in Haiti. We know what's going on in Venezuela. And we know how they dealt with these things. We just have to borrow a leaf. The whole of South America is full of, you know, this stuff or wars, you know. Some have now, uh, you know, gone down. But in some states, it's still going on. They are tackling these things. You know, but we know what to do. But we're playing politics because we're not altruistic in what we're doing. We're waiting for somebody that will be uh, altruistic eventually. We, we, we hope that maybe in the second term, of uh, President Tinubu, and he will realize that there's no need to play politics, and he will want to leave uh, some legacy, because it's usually in the second, second term that these people do these things, you know, because in the first term, you're selfish, and, you know, you, you say if you do certain things that are really fundamental, you know, you may not get reelected, and you play some games. But in second term, it's only your party that you're concerned about, that somebody wants to take over from you, maybe saying, ah, oh, please, if you do this, do this and you jeopardize my chance, you know. But if you really want to leave a legacy, you say, hey, okay, fine, look, I really want you to come, but, you know, we have to change the game, and they will do something. Some, we, we, can, we can be better than we are. We have the capacity, but we just, you know, are not doing it because we're not uh, altruistic enough. Well, many of the issues treated in the book have refused to go away. Yeah. Ethnic nationalism, mm -hmm. yeah. corruption, and the wedding fight. Mm -hmm business, economy, mm -hmm. and all of that, mm -hmm. you know, these issues remain the same. Why is it that in terms of the serious issues, the country has not been able to make uh, progress? Yes. And then I see that uh, in one of the chapters, you have a rejoinder to me. Uh, yes. That's, uh, yeah, Jonathan, an angry Nigerian youth. Yes. yes. That was a piece uh, I, I wrote in 2015. Absolutely. And uh, you disagreed with me. Completely. You said I was uh, off point. Yes. I should be cutting the angry youths yes. and all of that. You know, but my focus was about the abuse yes, of the social it, media. Which is still but ongoing. This is uh, 2024. Yes. In fact, the level of anger then mm -hmm. is uh, it's worse now. It's worse. Yes. You know, and then the social media, mm -hmm. uh, you know, succeeding governments mm -hmm. that came after mm -hmm. Buhari and. Uh, now Tinubu. Yes. They are also complaining about social media. Absolutely, absolutely. So, uh, well, right now, yeah, with the benefit of my side, do you think I was right then? Yes, <laughs> you, you were spot on. And something else, you know, that I should remind you that I pointed out there, I prayed that you get the job, and thereafter you got the job. Mm. 
in that article, I said, I wish that very soon you will be appointed into government so you see the inside of government, the other side of it, and know the kind of things that go on. And you, you see that it's easier said than done and whatever. You know. And I was shocked that less than three months after you were given the appointment and you went inside and saw all these sordid things, the kind of things that, you know, your hands are tied. You know, you, you know the right thing to do, you know, but there are different interests that you have to look at. When we're in government, for instance, there, there, there were certain things I used to propose to my governor because I was close to him and whatever, and I would write and what you know. And he would look at me, he would laugh, say, you don't understand. Okay, yes, we can do this. Don't you know about this? Okay, you are not aware. How about this? How about that? We can't do this because of this. I know it's, it's, the, it's the right thing to do, but because of this interest, we can't do it this way. If we do, there'll be a problem, whatever, you know, and stuff like that. So sometimes you really have to be an insider and you have to look at a lot of powers, forces, interests to balance and your hands become tied. You're, un you're unable to do certain things that you should have done. As you said, you know, obviously it's, uh, it has become a recurring decimal that the social media has become a menace. You know, but whether gagging, you know, uh, people is the answer, I don't know, whatever, you know. So we really have to think about it because it's like a, a knife that cost both, cuts both ways. Whatever, it has helped the speed with which we get information now. You know, sometimes people don't wait for you. You know, the thing is on, on, on Twitter, the thing is going very fast and whatever. Except when you add the analysis to it, it becomes more robust, then you now see them retweeting it or whatever, you know. But, so it, it's neither here nor there. We have to really think of how to go around this social media. But as we are just uh, being scared of the effect of social media, AI has joined now. So uh, I yeah, can have yeah. you, you saying what you didn't say. Yeah. So the thing is getting worse. Okay, so um, you have very interesting personalities whom uh, you have an afterwards after each of the parts. And I think quite notable, a few people who you got to um, write for you. I'd like to ask just on a person, how did you get that? And how did you identify whom you wanted to give an afterword after each chapter. So how did you match person? person? Because like you said in the preface, some mm -hmm. of whom you'd have wanted to be um, one of the contributors to your book had passed, unfortunately. Mm -hmm. um, yeah, Alaj Balari Mumusa, you talked mm -hmm. about that, mm -hmm. him. Alaj Latil um, you mm -hmm. talked about him. So I'd like to know, and I mean, a number of praises from some you know, key people in society. How did you select these people? Why did you choose them to, and pair them to their um, respective afterward? Yes, that's why it uh, took almost seven years for this book to be ready. I had to um, workshop them. I put a lot of authorities together, a lot of names together, and say, okay, fine, uh, this will be the best person for this. I, I choose like four or five. You know, I mean, it was option. If I tell you somebody like uh, uh, Governor of Anambra State, Soludo was going to be one. You know, uh, last minute he changed his mind. And some people have asked me a few questions. How did you get somebody like uh, Shegumi? So you are friends with Shegumi, you know, and you know, whatever. And I said, he's a simple man. Uh, you know, I reached out to him. And, you know, we're friends till tomorrow, you know. And, uh, you know, people say he has a radical outlook to things. He doesn't ex uh, express that to me, you know, and uh, we have convivial relationship, you know, and stuff like that. And, you know, so we, we, we settled for these people and started trying to pick and choose and reach out to them. Some uh, fell through. Some, as we were just going to uh, invite them, they got appointed into the advisory council of the president, you know, like uh, some of them, you know, became a part of the economic team to the president, and I felt they were going to be part of government. So. We have to be, just like right now, I am selecting people who would be uh, on the panel during the launch of the book. And I'm planning that the, 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 the theme will be Tinubunomics. Tinubunomics, the highs and the lows, you know. And we're assembling a panel of people who make a presentation so that we really understand what this whole government, this whole policy issues are about. Some people are saying uh, they are going around and around in circles. Some people are saying they are learning on the job. Some people are saying they are responding to the stimuli, whatever, you know, and stuff like that, and trying to not be rigid and stiff, you know. And, uh, you, know, st you know, so we, we, are, we are several this panel of people, people from government, people 
outside government and we'll see how we can see what's working and what's not working. You know, and uh, you know, so we we workshop it. We look at different people with relevant competencies and put them together. As far as I'm concerned, this book looks like the only one that has an afterword writer for each chapter. You know, so it's uh, unique, and it took us time to really uh, do that. Most of the people who were on board and deboarded eventually are going to read this and say, "Okay, fine." They also see people who replaced them, and in more cases than one, the people who replaced them actually turned out to be superior to the people who were proposing initially, whatever, you know. So it took time, it, it took time, you know, but uh, it just had to be done. When I saw those uh, afterwards, and yes. your lengthy introduction, mm -hmm. I just laughed, I said, well, you've taken uh, people like me out of uh, work as a professional book reviewer as it were you already reviewed the book extensively you, 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 by you, having people look at each chapter for in you in fact the truth is that you have been so let me let the cat out now yes i'm proposing that you be the, you be the book reviewer <laughs> you know so that's actually the truth depending on my schedule mm. but let me ask you now this book quite a volume it's about uh, how many pages let me see it's 620. 614. Mm -hmm. 614 pages. Now, how much is it? Where can we get it? Because it's, I mean, it's well produced. It's one thing to produce a book. It's another thing to put it in people's hands. Mm -hmm. If you do public presentation, mm -hmm. well, maybe some people will buy copies on that day. Mm -hmm. But the thing is to get the ideas yeah. out there. Yeah. So yeah. how much is it? Where is it available? How can we get copies? You're absolutely right, doctor. The, the book is very expensive to produce now because of the cost of things. Ideally, you know, what most publishers were doing, we're going to India to publish. But right now, we're doing well in Nigeria. If you feel this the hard copy, this was done in Nigeria. The hard yeah. copy is better than the soft copy. The hard cover is very good. I thought it was uh, maybe Singapore exactly. or Dubai. Exactly, yeah. that's what you would have done. You know, but so it's here, it's been published. And uh, the print came out just only last week. It's going to be on, uh, uh, in, in the leading bookshops. Uh, Roving Heights, for instance, had made a request for it. And uh, uh, readers and leaders, Tokwe uh, Fashwasa, whatever, they, they've been my stockists. But the whole thing is that you don't make money from book sales, unfortunately. Um, pirates would have grabbed this already. In fact, just a couple of days ago, I called the, uh, the printer and I said, I, I want the plates. When I published the book on Obakiari, I got a call from Kano, a bookseller, and he said, listen, I want to buy your book, but listen, I will buy 900 Naira. And I said, the book is selling for 1.5. He said, listen, Oga, as I am speaking to you, I have 1,000 copies. I just want you to give me the, they have pirated it. The person, the DG in charge of uh, um, Copyright Commission called me from Yola. He said he saw the book in the airport in Yola and he had to call his director to look around. And it, from the quality of the book, he knew it wasn't the original one. So it was pirated. So he proposed that we should do hologram. That's uh, Asin? Yes. Yes. Asin. yes. Yeah. yeah, he well, called me. together in color. Oh, really? Yeah. He was, he reached out, he found my number and called me. I said, listen, I saw your book and I knew it wasn't the original one. So what can we do about that? I, I don't know what to do. He said, let us do hologram. I said, the truth is that nobody is looking for the authentic one to read. They are looking for the book to read. So the, you, you know, so the way out is you know, to just let the people read the books. What I did with the last ones, I donate to libraries, to whatever. As you said, the only way you get return for this is corporate sponsorship. If during the launch, you know, MTN comes, you know, or Glow, or a bank, or your friends that you know in the industry, a Dangote, for instance, you know, or a Mike Adenuga, or whatever, and they throw in money. But you and I know the reason we're doing this is for public intellectualism, is to share your ideas um, with people in government to help them shape um, policies that will help the people generally, not because of the income. Yes, if it's published on Kindle and Amazon, you get a few bucks, the twenty dollars, you know, whatever. And if you push it, you know what to do. Push it where you know you get some money. But probably, if you're lucky, you get what covers the cost 
of the book. You know, but you, you, you are, you are uh, satisfied when you go out and you meet people that debate the ideas that you raised in there, just like you do as a columnist. Whether when people talk about what you are spoken about or when people watch your program and they see you somewhere, they say, oh, are you? Yes. Those views you espoused. You know, they either challenge it or complement it, whatever, you know, and stuff like that. And when you go away, you say, okay, fine, you have contributed your little to building of society. You may not be a billionaire who has built a school or constructed a, a road somewhere or whatever, but in your little way, you've been able to help to uplift society. And that's why I also said from the streets, it's not only people in government houses, yeah. you know, in, at the state level or federal level or in uh, the commanding heights of businesses that help you in your little way, sitting down here, you are influencing society, whatever, people who lead, two or three or four or five people, you are influencing them, and you're leading, you know, so in churches, in mosques, anywhere you have people that you influence, that you're in charge of, you know, whatever. So let us put our hands together on deck to see what we can contribute collectively. It doesn't have to be only those who are elected or who are appointed to public office or who have the privilege of establishing business or inheriting one from their parents. And by piracy is definitely something government needs to deal with, yeah. either with book production mm -hmm, mm -hmm. or with any cultural mm -hmm, product. Mm -hmm. But before we begin to round up, please, I, I would like you to be on record that what I have is, a, is, a, is, a, is an autographed copy. Yes, yes. <laughs> so that everybody you, will see it, no. that you autographed my copy. I feel <laughs> honored to do this. Uh, <laughs> Thank you very much. All right, so leading from the streets, media interventions by a public intellectual, 1999 to 2019, by Magnus Oyebe, with forward, written by General Yakubu Gowon, GCFR, Nigerian head of state, 1966 to 1975. Okay. Really? So Thank I'll definitely give you mine um, yes. once we're done, and just so that you can also autograph it as well. Thank you very this much. This is my honored. original copy as well. Yes. <laughs> Thank I you feel so honored. much. Thank you very much. Me. I appreciate it. Thank you for having me. Thank you.